So this design for a self-centering device was posted on the Fusion 360 forum and the user wants to accomplish two things. He's already applied some slider joints for this jaw and for the other one. And what he wants to do is he wants to link the motion of this vice jaw to the motion of this vice jaw exactly the way I'm showing this right now. They're supposed to move in sync apart from each other. And then the next thing that the user wants to do is link the motion of this uh, what's it called lead screw to one of the vice jaws so when we turn on the lead screw the vice jaws move apart or together in sync and that unfortunately cannot be done in this in this design and it kind of locks up it just doesn't do it and the reason for that is is many fold so usually when i start looking at designs like this and i've done this literally hundreds of times on the fusion 360 forum the first thing i start looking at is actually where's the origin of this design. Origins are such an important part when debugging designs. So that I, I usually in my own designs make sure that they're used, usually placed in some form of a sensible place. So looking at this origin, the overall origin, it, it's you know somewhere in space here. It's not at any particular corner here of this first well, of this first component. And you know it's it's not somewhere here centered in, in the mounting hole. So it's not in a place where it's it's somewhat random. So that's uh, the first thing I'm noticing. So then I roll the timeline back and take a look at how does this design actually start. So the, this design and taking a look here at the top level, we can see by the symbol here that design starts as as a component, like every other design in Fusion 360. Each design already is its own component. Only later on when you add components to it, does this symbol change into that of a component group. So I'm just going to throw the timeline marker here somewhere. You know, we have some components in here. And as soon as you start adding a component, this symbol starts. Uh, the symbol changes into that of a component group, just, just as those are. And those are linked component groups. Anyway, let's turn this, uh, let's move this backwards. Right, so the first thing that the user does, is he, he creates a sketch in here. And that sketch is clearly used to extrude geometry. And the intention for that geometry is probably to be its own component. And if the only thing that you would want to design in this particular design is a single, a single component, then that would be OK. But that's clearly not the intention that the user has in mind because later on in the step that I'm scrolling quickly forward to here, in this step, here it's still a body. Uh, another component that we're going to ignore for the moment has been uh, imported already. So this body is still a body in that top level, on the top level here. And then by right clicking on the body and saying create component from bodies, which is this symbol, that body is moved into this component. So obviously the intention of that user is for that body to be in its own component. And in Fusion 360, for mechanical, de uh, mechanical designs such as this, you shouldn't actually start with a sketch and start extruding geometry and then create that body, uh, move that body into its own component. You should actually start with, make, start with making a component. That's actually captured in Fusion 360 rule number one and I'll link that down below. This is probably one of those posts on the forum that's been linked to many, many times. So let's move forward. At this point in time, we have a body here in this design and the user imports another component and breaks the link. And that component is this little bearing. And the bearing appears right at the origin and the origin at that point in time is still located somewhat here in this component. So the user doesn't like that and later on just moves it out of place. And the problem with that is at this point in time, it's just a single position capture feature. So what those position capture feature do, uh, features do, they store the location and orientation of each component in your design at that particular time. So at this point in time, it's just one component, this one here, that's fine. But as your design grows and as you use these features more often, the data set in each feature grows because as the number of components grow, 
that feature has to just capture more locations and orientations. And I've seen designs where that slows the design down significantly, and it's also not really needed. So let's move on. Another sketches, is, a few sketches are created, extrusions, and then the user creates a joint. And the, initial, uh, the, the intention is obviously to create a joint between this component and what should be another component, but at this point in time isn't yet. So then the user actually takes the body and moves it into its own component. At that point in time, you actually have those two components that you want to join. So the question is, this joint was created before this component. What did the user really join? The user used a rigid joint and what the rigid joint does, it basically, it has nothing to do with geometry. A rigid joint locks the origins of the two components together that are joined. So what the user actually did, he created a rigid joint between this origin and the top level origin instead of creating a rigid joint between this origin and this origin. So that's another, uh, that's another mistake. So, but what I have not really looked at, and that's one of the first things that I also look at, is actually the sketch. And let's move this, oops, let's move this backwards. And that sketch looks all blue. And what that means, let's edit the sketch. What that means is that sketch is not fully dimensioned, and we can see there are almost no dimensions in here. Um, there might not be enough constraints in there to constrain this completely. And the problem with that is you can, by, even by accident, you can pull around on one of those line elements and just pull it out of position and you might not really want to do that. And the problem with that is in Fusion 360, you can only do that when you edit a sketch. You can also do that when you're not editing a sketch. You can just pull around on this. And we can see already this is, you know, definitely not what we want, what we want to do, uh, what we want to happen. So my recommendation is for mechanical designs such as this, you should always fully constrain and fully dimension your sketches. But let's move on. So I've scrolled forward to this, uh, to this place in the timeline where we already have two components. And let's hide those sketches. We don't need those at the moment. And then there is another component that is inserted. And it's inserted as a linked component. I personally don't use linked components very much and for several reasons. One of those reasons is that, as I said earlier, I take a look at origins in, uh, in components when I analyze designs. And you will notice when you work with linked components, you can't actually hide, or hide and show anything else. You can hide and show complete subcomponents, but you can't hide on show origins and sketches. And uh, that, that's really quite cumbersome if you design. Anyway, let's open this. And what we can see, again, I look at the origin. And also, in this case, that origin isn't where you would expect that for a round cylindrical component. I would that I would expect this origin somewhere right in the center of this cylindrical object, either here at the end or maybe there in the middle, but, but it isn't. And the reason for that is the user moved this and then captured the position possibly by accident. Another thing that we're noticing, again, that sketch also in here isn't fully constrained. It actually, I, I don't think this sketch has any dimensions on it. Nope, no dimensions on it. And that might have been intentional by the user just to quickly create an assembly to test assembly functions, but still, it's not a good practice. So another thing that we're noticing here, this is a component group with only one other component in it and nothing else, the sketch. And that's really not needed. If, if all you want to do is design one component in a design, then you, de you don't need to have another component uh, listed in this design. So what you can actually do, we can move this backwards and we'll do this later. I'll later explain how to fix all this. So let's first go through all the mistakes that were made in this, in this assembly. So again, these two timeline features 
the position capture and create component from body, they're not needed for this individual design. The next step in this design is actually creating another joint between the lead screw and the bearing block or the stationary block. And what's wrong with that? Well, there's not essentially anything wrong with that joint, but we might notice that we can still pull this around in the viewport because we can see this is the overall origin here. And I can pull this component around as I like to. And one of the first things that you want to do in any assembly once you have decided what is your stationary component, and this obviously is a stationary component, you want to actually ground that component so you can actually not drag it around in the viewport. So let's move the timeline marker back and ground this component. The user actually does that, but he does that very late in the timeline. So at this point in time, the user should have actually already grounded the component. So let me quickly explain what grounding actually does. I've not seen this explained anywhere on the forum or in any video. What grounding usually does, what usually people say is you ground the part. And what they mean with that, you ground the component. And that is true. What most people associate with grounding the component is actually the geometry. But that's not the case. What grounding really does, it locks the origin of the grounded compon component to the top level origin. So yes, in essence, you can ground components before there's any geometry or any sketches in it. Because when you create a component, the one thing that is in any new component is an origin. And that's what grounding really does. So at this point in time, we should actually be grounding this stationary block. And again, we'll go over that when I fix all this. So then the next thing that is done, as we already know, that lead screw is imported and is assembled with a revolute joint here in that, in that block, or actually I think in the bearing. That, that doesn't matter so much. And then the next thing is this front stationary block and that's assembled with a revolute joint to the lead screw and that's wrong that's not needed because the lead screw really only needs one revolute joint and that's the one that we already have let me forward this all the way to the end so how would i assemble this the first thing that i would do i would assemble all the rigid parts together not the rigid parts but the parts that remain stationary in this assembly so that's this component then I would assemble this component to, the, to this block here. I want to assemble this guide rod to this block here. And then I would use this block and, you know, this, this, uh, sorry, this one here, sorry, this one here, this front block stationary and use a rigid joint with one of those guide rods. You don't need a rigid joint between all two of them. You just need one rigid joint between one of those components, this one here, and this one here, or this one here, and this one, but not all three. That's not needed. And then you also, as I already said, you don't need the revolute joint between the lead screw and this component here. So that leaves you only with the movable components. In this case, what's left is the two vice jaws. And if we take a look here at how many sliding, sliding joints we have, we have one, two, and three. And if you right click on a joint and say select components, it shows you which components are involved in that joint. And it, what I've just selected, it, it's a bearing boss uh, somewhere in here, but it, what it really means, we have a sliding joint between this vice jaw and the lead screw and a sliding joint between this vice, uh, vice jaw and the lead screw. And then we have a sliding joint between this vice jaw and the guide rod out here and not only are the sliding joints between the vice rod uh, between the vice jaws and the lead screw are incorrect they're not they, they shouldn't be to the lead screw uh, but also we only need two and what we really need is a joint between each of the vice jaws and one of those guide rods and that that's really all that needed and in order to get that motion link between the two vice jaws so that they move in sync, it's really, in this case, we could do a motion link between this slider and this slider joint, enable reverse because they move the opposite direction. As you just saw, that already works.
But the problem with these sliding joints is, and the way this is assembled, because you would have to create a motion link between one of the sliding uh, joints and this revolute joint. And the problem with that is that the revolute joint, as well as the sliding joints, are associated with that same component, and that just doesn't work. So the sliding joint should be associated between the vice jaw and the guide rod, and the rotary motion of this of this um, lead screw and this this uh, revolu joint here should be connected to one of the sliding joints that is associated with the guide rod and the vice clamp, and that'll become probably clearer when I start fixing this stuff. So there's one more thing that I want to point out, one more mistake that's being made that I've also seen oftentimes. Let's open this sub-assembly of the front block stationary. So what we do see here is we have these two bearing components and then we have, well, uh, we have another body that actually should be its own component, but it isn't. And in this particular case, that actually works as an assembly within that assembly that it was inserted in. But there are situations, and I've come across those a number of times on the forum, is, well, let me first explain why this actually works as an assembly and does not create a problem. It doesn't create an assembly problem. It's because the user, when inserting, the, the user first, again, created a sketch and geometry and didn't create an extra component. And then the user imported these two components and created joints from rigid joints with these components. And those rigid joints were actually between this origin and that origin, and this origin and that origin. So they both are basically linked to the top origin. And that's why this works in, in the top assembly, in this assembly. But if there wouldn't be, if in many sub-assemblies, the components are assembled to each other, but they're not assembled to the top origin. And in that case, if you have a loose body floating in, it looks like in your assembly that you inserted it into, this body that isn't actually associated with an origin that's actually joined can float around and can be pulled and dragged around. Um, there's one other disadvantage to, to doing this, even though it seems to work in this assembly, is if you want to create a drawing from that, it would be an assembly drawing. And what you would uh, assume to be in your assembly drawing is three components, two bearing blocks and that stationary block. So let's create a drawing really quickly from this. And there's our component. Let's let's make that. Let's give this a different scale here. And I don't care about showing any other geometry here. What I want to do is I want to insert a table. And what we expect to see in this table is a component count of three, but we only see a component count of two. And that's those two bearings here. They're identical. That's why it only creates one line but we don't see the block. Well, the block is not its own separate component in that assembly, and that's another problem. Uh, when creating assemblies like this, we have components at the same structural level with the body. We don't want to do that. 